Hey y'all, hey, it's JJ Conway. Welcome to Building Wealth Together, where our goal is to help you walk in abundance and leave a legacy. It's Mindset Monday, where we take the best teachings on mindset, motivation, and leadership and apply them to your life. This helps you get past the past and grow forward into abundance. Let's get into it. For our book study this month, we are studying Zoned In by Cheryl Klein. And if you haven't already, go to my Building Wealth Together podcast, go to episode 132, Juice with JJ, where I actually interview Ms. Klein about her work. I start off telling the story of how she asked me for referrals. So now most accomplished coaches know who they're, what they want to work with and they let you know, this is who I want, right? And she said, I'm sharing this with you not only to tell you how this convicted me, which is why I want to talk about the book, but also as a sales tip for you who need to know how to go after more business. Okay. So you can do what she did. You can model what she did. So she clearly outlined who I should be referring to her. Okay. So this was last January. We were speaking together at Microsoft Women in Cloud. And she says something like, I'm filling up my calendar for the year and I've got I'm looking for three more women who are at the top of their game. And I honestly don't even know what she said after that. It may have been something like women who need help reaching their next level of success and joy. But all I could think about was I'm not at the top of my game. I don't even think any of my friends are at the top of their game. I mean, I honestly evaluated my circle and not to be mean or rude to anybody, but I, I don't think most of us were at the top of our game. I think most of us are now like we took advantage of COVID to refocus on what's important and release what's not right. So I, so I think we're at the top of our game now, but last January, I, I couldn't even name three of my favorite people who I could tell her really were at the top of my game. We were overtired, we were unhealthy, and I'm not gonna speak for them on this point, okay? But I'm gonna tell on my own self, I was getting a lot done, but I wasn't doing very much very well. Oh, I was working hard, y'all. I've always been a hard worker. I was expending a lot of energy and you're working hard. I'll bet you're a hard worker too. And I'll bet you're expending a lot of energy. But at the end of the day, what have you actually accomplished? Perhaps you're where I was, always trying and working and pushing and hustling. And sometimes those priorities slip away. And that's why I'm really excited for today's book study. I'm really excited for this book and I'm really excited to share it with you today. So we're going to go through this book in March. I think you're really going to enjoy it. And the best part about it is everything she's written in here, these are principles that are really simple to grasp. It's not groundbreaking. You don't need no big PhD in physics. You don't need a hundred pound brain. You don't need, even though she works with world-class athletes, you don't need to be a world-class athlete. You just got to, you just got to be a world-class you and the simple steps but real steps, y'all, that she talks about in this book will help you do just that. So let me read you a little bit about Cheryl, okay? Cheryl Klein has spent over two decades studying and working with world-class athletes and business professionals. She has curated some of the most significant research, case studies, and individual corporate client experiences at such companies as Autodesk, Bank of America, Google Ventures, and VMware, to name a few. The result is a proven seven-step framework to help you dream, plan, and achieve your best. Inside Zoned In, you'll get crystal clear on what you yearn for and why it's so important to you. You'll develop a roadmap for where you want to go. You'll gain an accountability structure. You know I like accountability. You'll gain an accountability structure to make consistent progress and you'll learn how to perform at your best in high pressure or high stakes situation. Now, learning to shift your mindset will give you the foundation to take control of your ambitions so you can get out of your own way and reach your next level of success and joy. Y'all, I love how she says, when negative emotions and setbacks tempt you to veer off your path to victory, this book will guide you back towards the finish line. 
And I've been on a journey. Some of you have been with me on this journey to really study what the best do and apply it to our lives. And the more I study and the more I learn, the more I realize that these principles, these are time tested success strategies and they can be implemented by anybody regardless of your genetics, regardless of your situation, regardless of what's happened to you, regardless on what hasn't happened to you. Anybody can harness these principles to lead a better life. So let's start as I normally do. Let's start with the introduction. And again, for those of you who are new to my book studies, I normally do this as a phone call. I don't normally do it video like this. So I'm a little, I'm a little self-conscious about turning down and reading and then looking at you, you know, cause I want to look cute, right? Like I want to put my, my camera up here and I want to reduce the double chins and all that stuff. But we're just going to be people today. Okay. <laughs> we're just going to be people today. All right. There's one factor that separates the best from the rest. World-class performers know how to use their thoughts and emotions to their advantage on the march from good to great. They know how to be mentally tough. And one of the things that I highlighted here in the introduction is that you can learn to be mentally tough. These are skills that you can learn. Do I think some people are born with a certain degree of tenacity and commitment and toughness? I, I have kids and each of my kids have different personalities and they have different personalities from their parents. So I would say, sure, some people just naturally have a little bit more grit than others. But that doesn't mean you can't develop what you need to succeed. You absolutely can. And, and now, 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 now maybe you are somebody with that grit and tenacity today. Uh, I want to caution you to have a little compassion and grace on uh, people who maybe like to have a little bit more fun and like a little bit easier road. OK, I, I never had any compassion. This is not in her book. This is just me talking to you. Um, I, I never had any compassion on people that didn't pick themselves up and move forward because I. I always picked myself up and moved forward. I didn't care what you were going to throw at me. I was not going to take it laying down and I was not going to take no for an answer. Right. And so, um, it led me to accomplish a lot, but it also led me to be someone who had very little compassion for others who got knocked down by the, by the, by the throes of life. And, you know, I had that car accident and well, actually a series of car accidents. I had a bunch of stuff that happened to me a couple years ago and just all of it together just really humbled me and opened up my eyes. And at the same time that all that was going on, I was learning more about personality. I was getting certified in all these personality things. And I began to realize that my children were not me. They have a different personality style. And I can, I can prefer my style all day long, but they bring a lot of fun and laughter and joy into people's lives a lot more than I ever did until I learned how to harness some of their personality for myself. Right. And so, um, you know, I I'm speaking to two groups of people today with this one. I'm speaking to people who I'm primarily with this book, speaking to people who know they want to take their life to the next level, but you don't know how this book is going to show you how. Thanks for being on with us, Joe. Appreciate you hanging on as long as you could. Um, uh, this is for this. This I'm primarily teaching to people who know there's more. You know there's more out there. You just don't know how to get it. And you know that you've been made for more, but you just don't know how to open that up. Okay. That's who that's really for. But in my doing that, I have a lot of high performers on my uh, Facebook feed, on my Building Wealth Together podcast. I want to assure you these same principles will help you take your life to the next level. So this is for everybody today. I don't know who needed to hear that. Have you ever, oh, this question got me, y'all. Have you ever prepared relentlessly, been 100% capable, and then showed up and not delivered? Oh, I know. That's me right there. I did all the prep. I did all the work. I knew I had it. I'd done the practice. I've done it in the mirror, recorded myself, get on the stage. Uh, anybody else been there? Mm -mm -mm. Whatever your circumstances, though, you need to know whether you are facing issues with a partner, whether you're fishing, facing issues with a child, whether you're fishing issues with a career that requires you to be agile. Your failures and the things that haven't gone wrong right up until now, that's not an indication of your future potential. See, whatever your circumstances, we really are multi-sport athletes who have a champion within. I love the way she writes this, but it doesn't matter if we are the best of the best in one area without the proper tools, she writes, it's impossible to limit 
I'm sorry, without the possible, without the proper tools, it's possible to limit yourself by what you think is possible by your current circumstances, by your past experiences, or by your future worries. Remember what we talked about in self-image rising for those of you who took that class. Okay. Uh, many of us, we spend so much of our time worrying about the past and stressing about the past and living in our past failures that we don't harness those same imaginative and creative powers in our mind. You know, the creative powers that come up with all the things that could go wrong. We don't, we don't, we don't use that for good. We don't use that to look at all the amazing future we could have. We just use it to look at all the bad stuff that could happen. And, and we limit ourselves. Napoleon Hill wrote that successful people made decisions very quickly and they did so according to their purpose, their purpose in life. Whereas unsuccessful people made decisions very slowly, frequently fretted and worried about and changed them. And they made their decisions according to their current circumstances or limitations and not according to their future desired goals and purpose. Okay. And so, and so today, you know, we have to understand that if we're doing like Cheryl says she was here and I love that she said this, cause it made me feel so much better about myself. She said that, you know, when, whether she was in school playing sports or, or whatever it was, she always made sure she was prepared and she knew she was capable. Let me just pause for a second. You know, a lot of times I never prepared because I thought I needed to be in the moment and I'd have more energy and more juice. Some of y'all deep personality styles, you do get more juice when you're in the moment and you've got the pressure because you do well under pressure, right? So you create situations of pressure. But 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 some of us need to learn how to prepare. <laughs> but what she's saying here is she was prepared. She knew she was capable. Yet when it came time to compete, all the hard work seemed to be for naught. I showed up, but I couldn't deliver, especially when it mattered most. When she talks about her experience, she talks about how she worked with Olympians. And then she talked about how she spent the better part of three decades studying applied sports psychology and working with world-class athletes and business people to crack this code and master the mental toughness that's needed for achieving your best. Okay. So she's created the framework. We're going to talk more about this over the next couple of, um, over a couple of weeks. She's created this framework that you can use to really hone in on, to really hone in on the transformation that's needed to access your higher potential and have more joy. Okay. We're all capable of more. And that doesn't mean you're not doing a lot because I know I'm doing a lot. I'm sure you're doing a lot. Like I'm, I'm really honored that you're taking the time to watch my video because I know you are busy. <laughs> it means a lot to me that you're on today because I know you got a lot to do. You're juggling a million different hats. That's not what we're talking about here, but we're still all capable of more. Okay. And so then the question is, well, how do we become our best selves? You know, how do we gain the clarity and the resilience to persevere when it matters the most to persevere when the journey gets hard? How do we develop that? I mean, after a while of things happening and happening after a while, you just get tired of getting back up. Now, I still remember from Live the Lead last year, you know, John Maxwell said, you know, you, you keep getting knocked down and you keep getting back up and you keep getting knocked down and you keep getting back up and you just keep going and you keep going. He said, after a while, that's not tenacity. That's, that's stupidity. <laughs> he said, you know, next time you get knocked down, you ought to take a look around and figure out why you're getting knocked down and learn from it, right? But for a lot of us, we've been getting knocked down and we've been getting up successfully, learning from it, harnessing that power and moving forward for much of our adult life. But there's still, after a while, the residual of that disappointment and the frustration. We don't deal with that stuff. We don't recharge. That comes, that builds up, all right? And so she says that the way, the one of the key things that we need to know about developing our best selves is working and thinking and planning in a certain way. Oh, where have you heard that before? Acting in the certain way, all the Napole Napoleon Hill, Thomas Chorich, James Allen, all of these, all of these writers of of early thought, right, of third of um of of twentieth century thought advancement, they all say the same thing. There is a certain way with which to approach our goals that will 
that will diminish the impact of our limiting beliefs on ourselves and will open us up to a brighter future. And, and many of you, if, if you don't know this already, I have taken those principles and I have actually uh, conjoined them with the biblical principles that they were before these guys said they thought of them, right? And I've actually put them together in a class. We're starting a, um, Authentic Abundance Thursday, so you definitely want to be on that. Work ethic, mental toughness, all that stuff is, is so important. Mental toughness is the foundation. And so we think, oh, well, I'm tough. I get a lot done. But you know, work ethic isn't the only thing we need. Okay. We can work and work and work and work and work, and we're still not going to get from here to there. Okay. And so what, what we're going to cover over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to read this to you. Um, you're going to learn again, how to get crystal clear on what you want. You're going to design a custom plan to help you get there. So this isn't a one size, it's a, it's a one size fits all framework, but it's, it's a customized plan because what's important to you is different. From what's important to me, right? And what I need to grow is different from where you need to grow, but the same steps are used to work our way or work our way down the pyramid. All right. All right. So we're going to learn how to be accountable for our success. Now, look, I know, you know, about accountability partners. We all know about accountability partners. Most of us watching today, we get paid because other people need us to be their accountability partners, okay? But have we developed in our life an accountability system to make sure that we always have somebody there when it's needed and the right type of accountability when it's needed? And then I like this one here, become more proficient even when you are unable to physically practice. And if you don't know why that's so important to me, I'm not going to give you the whole sob story, but I had a, I had a car accident that really worked a number on my ability to do anything for a long time. It was the most humbling thing I've ever gone through. And I realized that life is short. My time is short. I have been gifted some abilities and some talents that are to be put to use. And I, and I, and I don't know how much time is allotted to me. All I know when I was laying in that emergency room and I was hardly able to form answers to any questions the doctor was asking me, all I know is that time is limited and you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. So you got to make the most of today. So that's the introduction. You're going to love this book, y'all. And again, this is the framework that we're going to be working through here. Okay. Here she writes in chapter one, get to know yourself. Ah. Oh. How many of us wish she didn't start with get to know yourself? Because <laughs> we're like, we spend so much time doing, we're taking care of other people. We really don't want to spend time with ourselves. And, and, and those of you who heard me um, in the, uh, in the uh, authentic journaling class, you know, I, I, I really don't like to have that silent time. I'm learning to appreciate that silent time. It's a growth area for me, right? Because I just don't want to deal with me. I'm a lot to deal with. <laughs> but world-class performers are remarkably clear about what their heart is telling them to strive for and why they care so deeply about it. You've heard me talk about how you need to have a big why. It's not just to help carry you through the tough times, but it's a beacon that guides you through everything that you do. Okay. It's also important to accept that our obligations change as do our interests and personal missions. It's okay. When I retired from the Air Force, I, I was not trying to retire. I did not want to retire. That was, I was still had a lot of fight left in me and I felt like I was finally starting to heal up and I was really ready to prove, you know, give me another year, put me in coach. I got this right. And it, and even when General Kowalski was doing my retirement um, speech, like he was doing, he was doing his remarks as my officiant for my retirement. Even while he was giving his remarks in my heart, I was starting to tear up because I was like, I I'm not ready for this awesomeness to be over. I've done so many great things for the nation. And, you know, a lot of people didn't, a lot of people don't realize the stuff I did. Some of them sitting in the, in the back is hilarious. My friend, um, my friend was uh was was recording it and and I guess the people in the back they didn't realize they were being recorded so it's always interesting to hear people who are like wow I didn't know she did all that cuz you know they met me after the accident I was kind of like practically a vegetable right and so um so I'm starting to tear up and then I get up and I start to give my remarks and I look out over that crowd 
And the first two rows are full of a whole bunch of people that I don't even really know. They only came because the general was there, right? And so if the if the, if the former commander, the former MAGCOM commander shows up, then of course we're all gonna show up because you know we're gonna, you know, we're not gonna not show up when the big wigs in town, right? And I'm I'm looking at all these people that I don't even know. And and in that instant, I was like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I've done my part. I've broken a lot of barriers in the Air Force. I've changed a lot of minds about uh, racism and, and the role of women in the Air Force. I've done a lot of stuff. It's time for somebody else to take this. I'm going home with my kids and my husband. I'm going to have me a good life. <laughs> and that's okay. It's okay for our interests and our personal missions to change. I had been spending 20, well, since the time I declared physics, it would have been like 27 years, I guess, 27 years of my life trying to prove that that guy was wrong when he told me blacks can't do physics, right? Like that was not my mission anymore. My mission was a happy, cohesive family that made a lot of money, having a lot of fun, helping a lot of people. All right. And so there are times in our lives and, and Cheryl calls them ambition checkpoints. There are times in our life where everything just feels like there could be more. When life changes around you, Sometimes we don't pay attention because we have not spent the time to get to know ourselves and our body and our emotions will let us know what's going on if we will take the time to pay attention. Like for me, one of the things that I notice with me is that if I haven't had a good enough cry or if I hadn't had deep enough prayer for a while, I'll start to get more salty at the eyes, you know, and that's a sign to me that I really need to stop and be still because if I don't, I'm heading for a crash. <laughs> right. But in this case, the, uh, the lady, the, the friend of hers that they, she was having this conversation, her friends needed her less. She felt like there was more of her to give to her career, more people to serve a legacy to create. How many of us want a legacy? Right. But she felt like with inaction that she was off purpose. She was like a plastic bag drifting through the wind. She was being blown around by her days and her old routine by other people's wants and needs, and by being busy without being purposeful. We talked about this, right? So without defining her next level of ambition, she didn't have a plan to make progress, okay? And so when we're, when we're not making progress towards living into the best version of ourselves, well, then we're not as happy as we could be. And so I find it an interesting thing here. It isn't about being and doing pleasurable things, okay? It, 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 it's not, it's like the lesson that we had on, on the habit of happiness. It's not about enjoying my drink. It's not about having a great call with an old friend. It's not about the pleasurable activity. There is a process to happiness. And that process has as its foundation personal growth and pursuit of the best self pursuit of the highest and best self. Okay. It's a process and following the process leads to happiness. All right. When we get off kilter, it's because something else has opened up and we have either failed to adjust our perception. We failed to adjust our focus and now we're just kind of flitting along. Okay. And so maybe you're giving a hundred percent to your family, but you're putting aside your dreams. Okay. You know, maybe, maybe your career goals are being well fulfilled, but you're neglecting your family or your physical health. Woo -wee. If you, if you find yourself floating along and you know, there's more for you, it's time to really get in touch with who you are. And I might like to add as a preacher, uh, whose you are. Okay. I want us to think about our ambitions and I don't want us to consider our ambition a dirty word. See, see, one thing that I've had to come to as a minister is that there are a lot of things that have been bred into us by society that that are adaptations of scripture or common knowledge that really actually hold us down rather than allow us to be used. OK, so so we know those of us who are of like faith. So you don't have to be of my faith. I, I love you anyway. You can watch my stuff. I'm cool. Um, but uh, but people who share my faith, we know that pride goes before a destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. You, you, you far too far lifted up. You're on the brink of destruction. Right. But here's an interesting thing. Is it prideful for me to say God has given me a gift to teach people how to win at life? 
Is it prideful for me to say that God has shown me, he's given me a talent on how to help people with their money? You know, not everybody has that ability. For one, most people aren't direct enough to really be able to help you with their money because most people are too scared of what you're going to think about them. See, I got your money before you hired me. And so when you hired me and paid your money, I already got it. So I'm going to tell you what you need to know about your money, right? I had one client the other day. She said, you were really harsh, but it was right. Now we're doing so much better. <laughs> <laughs> but not everybody has that talent. Okay. Not everybody has that patience. Not everybody has that calling. Not everybody has the experience of getting out of $800,000 of debt, right? For me to sit here and say that I'm humble and I'm just me and I'm just little old me and I don't really know that much. And for me to say all of that, that is an offense against God. Now I'm going to be humble in other areas, I'm going to say, you know what? I don't know anything about decorating. Please help me, right? I, I know a little bit about cooking. My husband thinks I can cook and that's really all I care about, right? My boys, my boys, I'm teaching them how to cook. So, but you know, when it comes to fashion or decoration or a lot of the girly things, I really, I need help. And I don't have a problem admitting that because I'm humble enough to admit that. That's humility, okay? Um, but when it comes to something that God has called you and gifted you to do, for you to pretend you don't know how to do it, that is actually a slap in the face to the great God who created the heaven and the earth and created you with creative power. He created you to do great things. He created you to be abundant. He created you to walk in abundance. Now, now I know we have seasons of lack. My goodness, I just came out of a couple of years of a season of lack. I mean, lack in my body, lack in my money, lack in everything, you know? And so I'm happy to be coming out of that season. Could I just have some peace for a few more years before we go through the next trial? Oh, Lord, please let me learn from somebody else's experiences so I don't have to go through that again, right? But, uh, but the Lord, you know, sometimes we're going to have that, sure. And we don't want to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think, but I don't want you to beat yourself up more lowly than you ought to think. Because guess who's behind that? Not the Lord. Not my great God who says I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Not my God who calls me his child and says that he's going to take care of my every need. Not my God who said he wants me to be in health and prosper. Not my God who said that I can do all things through him to strengthen me. Not my God who said he's going to give me the power of the Holy Spirit that out of my belly should flow rivers of living water. That great God who said I could lay hands on the sick and they be healed. He didn't make me so I could cower in the corner and pretend I'm nothing so you won't be offended. And too many of you been playing small because like me, most of my life, you thought the way to be humble was to hide your talents. But we're not going to hide our talents under a bushel, a bushel no more. We're going to do the work of the Lord. And we're going to do what we are called to do to change communities. All right. So when we talk about ambitions in this book, I don't want you to look at it in a negative, prideful way. The Lord doesn't say you can't have ambitions. He says to make sure they are properly subjugated unto his will. Most of the ambitions on my heart are actually things God has called me to do. All right. Now, you know, our human lust slips in there sometimes, but that's why we have to pray, y'all. I want to I want to hit on this point here. She talks about how we really need to examine where we are at in our career, in our relationships or maybe even a specific relationship and then our personal wellness routine. And she also says keep in mind that quitting isn't as awful as it sounds if you're quitting something that isn't serving you. OK, so so I think about that. It comes to my mind, the law of sacrifice. Right. I always thought the law of sacrifice is I'm going to give up this and I'm going to give up that because I want I want something else out of life. Right. The law of sacrifice isn't about giving up. It's about letting go of something of lower value to reach for something of a higher value. All right. So 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 for me, um, with the whole storm and everything, because all we had in the house was some milk and egg and a whole like 25 pounds of flour. I got off my, my brain health eating plan and because uh, we were snowed in and I was OK with that. But I realized this last week I said, well, you know, I already busted it last week. You know, let me go ahead and enjoy myself this week. <laughs> I realized I realized that sugar, the sugar, the sugar that I ate this past week was not worth the impact to my brain health. And I realized that for me, I'm going to let go. And I've said this, I've had this battle with sugar a couple times, so y'all can hold me accountable. But uh, but I have decided it is not worth it. And the other day I had all these different speaking engagements. So I was like, you know what? I really would like to eat this. I really want to go to the grocery store and get some new food. I hope the grocery store is restocked. This is all we have in the house right now. I will wait. 
because it's not worth it to me to have my brain shut down and be all foggy and be out of sorts what I'm trying to teach, okay? I let go of something of a lower value to reach for something of a higher value, okay? And so the longer we ignore this pull upon us, that something needs to grow into more, all right? The longer we the longer we ignore that, the louder and louder it gets. The louder and louder it gets until it eventually demands our attention. I ignore my teenager's cries for attention. Now he doesn't all, now he does sometimes because I've taught him to do so, but he doesn't, he's trying to be tough now. He doesn't always say, mom, I just want you to sit with me. Mom, I just want to be with you. He won't say that all the time, but it shows up in his behavior and you ignore that long enough. Oh, you'll have to address it. All right. You don't pay attention to it. Now you'll be in that principal's office. You don't pay attention to your health now. Oh, you will have to pay attention to it later. I remember one of my, um, I just, I just saw the neurologist, but, uh, about two years ago, I think it was the last visit I had with a neurologist. And I remember looking in that, in that, uh, in that, uh, Oshner LSU health center and all these people, that was their day. Their day was to sit there waiting for their appointments. Like that was their entire life was staying alive. And I remember that some of y'all saw that Facebook post. I made up my mind in that moment that this was not going to be my future. I made up my mind in that moment that I was going to work as hard as it took to get my health back. And I'm not where I want to be, but I've certainly come a long way in these last two years. But I don't want that for myself. I want to be in my best health. And 20 years from now, I want to be looking back saying 65 is the new 45. I don't want to be, I don't want to spend my whole life trying to address my health when I could have taken the steps now to address my health. We all know the things we need to do. We just don't do them. And here's the thing, Dr. Stephen uh, Aldana, professor and CEO of WellStep says unhealthy lifestyle behaviors are responsible for most chronic diseases. Look, y'all, 70 percent of all deaths and up to 75 percent of all health care costs. Lack of physical activity, poor diets and tobacco are directly responsible for 70 to 90 percent of chronic diseases. Seventy to ninety percent of what's killing us, we can control. And I'm not saying it's easy, because Lord knows this brain health diet is not easy. Simple, but it's not easy. All right. So we really need to get to know ourselves, okay? And maybe physical isn't your problem today. Maybe it's the career bucket. Maybe you really need to do better. And I think a lot of times we know what we need to do career-wise. I mean, sometimes we don't. We can find a mentor, but I think a lot of us know. Like, I know I need to follow up better. And I know I need to study my calendar. Not just look at my calendar, but study my calendar better. I mean, Dave Meltzer has been telling me that for years. <laughs> study your calendar, <laughs> study it. Why is this there? Why is that there? Why is this the way it is? You know, maybe it's, maybe it's not physical career. Maybe your physical and career are really humming along, but maybe it's the relationship bucket. When we stop making progress on filling our most important bucket, it's like a slow leak in a balloon draining us of our joy and what we can give to others. And so she says, he, she asks the question here, is it even possible to, to be a sustainable high performer when our relationships are, are lacking? And that's something we got to ask ourselves because the, the more advanced I get in my, in my second career, the more I realize that relationships are so important. I wish I would have realized that in my first career, I thought my own hard work was all I needed. And not only that, but taking care of ourselves and doing the things we have to do doesn't just impact us personally. It impacts our family. You know, it impacts our coworkers. It impacts our employees. It impacts our clients. What effect is your lack time having on your loved ones, your clients, and yourself? I'm going to leave you with that question as we close out. And I'm going to encourage you to be with me next week as we talk about zoned in and we start talking about the first layer here. Zero excuses. I'm JJ Conway. I want to thank you for being with us. Y'all take care and be blessed. Love the podcast? Be sure to like, subscribe, and forward to three friends. You can ask a question or take a life-changing class at buildingwealthtogether.com. Now go walk in abundance and leave a legacy.